you have your Bibles, please turn to Acts chapter 7. We'll begin today in Acts chapter 7. In Acts chapter 6 and 7, a great man of God, Stephen, we all, I believe all of us know about Stephen, Stephen stood up for Jesus as we just sang, sang, stand up for Jesus. That's what's on my heart tonight, is us standing up for Jesus. And I, I want to add to that, that if we stand up for Jesus... Jesus will stand up for us, and that's amazing. Uh, if you think about that, as sinful as we are and as uh, wretched as we are, God's mercy and grace is that if yeah, the only way we can stand up for Jesus in the first place is because He first loved us, He quickened us, He gave us the desire, He moved in us, He, he led us to repentance. Uh, so the fact that if we follow, that's just the least of our duties to follow in Christ and to stand up for Jesus, if we do that, God will stand up for us. I mean, that's the least that we should be doing. We'll never do all that we should be doing for Jesus who stood up for us before we even did anything good. We were dead in trespasses and sins and He made us alive. He has no reason to have to help us and stand up for us in any way on this earth, but He does. If we stand up for Him while we live in this world, He will stand up for us. And Stephen was a man full of the Holy Ghost. And uh, some, some heathens came and started arguing with Stephen. And uh, Stephen spoke up for God, and in Acts chapter 7, he started giving these men, they accused him of not following the Jewish religion. And uh, Stephen started giving them a recital about the Jews' religion. He started with Abraham, and he went all the way through to Solomon. He told them everything about the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And he also, start, starting now in Acts chapter 7, starting in verse 51, he ended his lesson, his history lesson to these leaders in the Jewish nation. He ended his history lesson with this, verse 51. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of Jesus Christ. That's where they missed out in the Jewish religion. He told them about the, the history. and uh, They have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. When they heard these things, whenever these men heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Listen carefully to verse 55. This is the verse that's on my heart tonight. But he, that is Stephen, but he being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God. We could stop right there and talk about how marvelous it is that whenever Stephen stood up for Jesus... He saw the glory of God. But the, the next part's even more glorious. He saw the glory of God, and he saw Jesus. Not sitting now. Jesus wasn't sitting at the right hand of, of the Father. Jesus was standing on the right hand of God. Jesus stood up for Stephen whenever they were persecuting Stephen. Verse 56, And said, this is Stephen, He said out loud, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul, and they stoned Stephen. And then this is talking about Stephen now. They, while they were stoning Stephen, Stephen was calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and he cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Um, I think it's amazing that the God of heaven and earth would look down on us and care about us. And whenever we try to serve him, he would bless us. I know Stephen was stoned to death. 
Brethren, I know his physical body was persecuted. And, and some people, the worldly people, the carnally minded out there might say, well, God didn't stand up for Stephen. But I'm telling you, I don't know if there's too many other people, even in the Bible, who have experienced the blessing that Stephen experienced while he was being stoned to death. Right. He saw Jesus standing up for him at the right hand of the Father. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, um, my, my cry out to you and to all of us is we have an opportunity. Brother Billy just brought before us uh, several opportunities for us to stand up for Jesus. It is a, it's, a, it's a shame and a disgrace that we don't stand up for Jesus any more than we do. Um, and we're scared to stand up for Jesus. But I'm telling you, if you'll stand up for Jesus, he'll stand up for you in the same way that he did for Stephen. And there, he, he probably felt pain. He felt, I don't believe that he didn't feel any pain. He probably felt the physical pain of those stones. However, the only way that he could pray for those people who were stoning him is that God had filled, his, filled him with the Holy Spirit. He was full of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. He was in the kingdom in a, the highest degree possible. He was in paradise. He, uh, that was a blessing. And we can withstand anything. They can stone us to death. They can threaten to kill us. We can withstand anything if we stand up for Jesus because He'll stand up for us and we'll feel His peace that passes understanding. We'll feel joy in the midst of persecution. Think about Paul, whenever they were thrown in prison, they sang and they rejoiced. Uh, they saw Jesus standing up for them in the midst of that persecution while others were persecuting them. Think about, there's many in the Bible, think about David and Goliath. David, little tiny David, in, in the eyes of some of those other people, who was youthful. Um, he saw that there was this, this big Goliath Philistine out there uh, mocking the true God of Israel. And what was everybody else, all these mighty soldiers, what were they doing? They were cowering down, they were sitting down and hiding, and they were not standing up for the God, the true God, Jesus Christ. They were not standing up for the Lord. So David said, well, well, how can this Philistine mock us? How can he stand against the armies of the true God of Israel? He stood up for the true God of Israel. And he said, is there not a cause? And what did God do? Whenever he went to fight that Philistine, everybody knew he was going to lose. He was going to fall. God stood up for him. He stood up for God and God stood up for David. And David defeated Goliath. Think about uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Just like Stephen saw Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father while he was being stoned. Whenever those three men stood up for the true God, they were not going to bow down to a false God. They stood up for Jesus Christ. They were thrown into a fire. It looks like God had just, he just left them to get persecuted and he was going to leave them alone. But, as we all know, there were four men in that fire. Yeah. Jesus was standing up for those three men. Yeah. And Daniel, in the lion's den, Daniel stood up for the true God. And God was with him. Jesus stood up for him and shut the mouths of the lion. Um, Think about Job for a second before we turn to another scripture. Job stood up for Jesus. Because what would any of us do, probably, if we had lost everything? One came to him and told him that he lost all of this stuff, all of his oxen and servants. And while that one was still talking, another one came up and told him he'd lost this other thing. And while that one was still talking, another one came up and told him he'd lost all of his children. I can imagine. Um... I would probably charge God falsely. I, I would charge Him foolishly and I would think, Why God? Why would you do this? But uh, not Job. Job stood up for the true God. He, he remembered that we don't deserve him, for Him to stand up for us anyway. We don't deserve anything from God. And God gave him those 12 children. God gave him all that stuff. And that was a blessing. He said that God gave and God took away. But he, he blessed the name of the Lord. There's many of us here that are going through trials and going through tribulations. Some that aren't here, I think about Brother Ken Drayton, all the trials and suffering Amen. he's gone through. As that man stood up for Jesus Christ, Amen. he has, and we should be ashamed whenever we don't in our sufferings and on our affliction. Turn back two chapters with me. Turn to Acts chapter 5. 
Peter and the apostles stood up for Jesus many times, but in Acts chapter 5, we're going to start with verse 17. Peter and the apostles were going out and they were, they, the church was growing and multiplying and they were healing people and they were preaching boldly Jesus Christ. They were standing up for Jesus Christ, proclaiming the truth about Jesus being the Savior and Jesus being God. And uh, the higher-ups did not like that and they were upset. And uh, look at verse 17. Then the high priest rose up and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, they couldn't stand it, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in, in, in the common prison. Now, if, 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 uh, if some soldiers came in here right now because I'm preaching, I'm standing up for Jesus, and the soldiers came and they took me and they pulled me off and they pulled all of you out here and put us all in common prisons. Uh, we might be tempted, if we, if we don't check our hearts, we might be tempted to stop standing up for Jesus. And if they told us, oh, we're putting you in this prison, and you better not go out and preach in the name of Jesus ever again. We might be tempted to stop standing up for Jesus and not, not proclaim some of these truths. We'll just say the good things. We'll just say that Jesus loves you, and we'll just say those things. But uh, Peter did not do that. Let's keep going. Verse 19, But the angel of the Lord... By night, opened the prison doors. Again, right, already right now, they stood up for Jesus, and Jesus stood up for them. He opened up the doors to the prison, and brought them forth, and said, now here's the charge that he gave them, that we might not be so ready to accept right after we just got thrown in prison. Look at verse 20. Go, what's the next word? Stand. Stand. Stand up for Jesus. Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning. They didn't even wait. They couldn't wait to go stand up for Jesus. They were persecuted and thrown in prison and it didn't matter. The second God let them out of the prison, they, they were ready to go stand up for Him again. When they had heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. Uh, come down to verse 25. So they were teaching now, and they were supposed to be in prison, and they were teaching standing up in the temple. They weren't quietly going around to one group and another group. They were standing up in the temple and preaching and teaching about Jesus Christ, standing up for Him. And in verse 25, they, they had found them, and they went and told about them. They said, Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men who ye put in prison are standing, standing, in the temple, and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers, and brought them without violence, for they feared the people. You know what will happen if we will stand up for Jesus? Those people that are talking so big, and they're talking like they're, uh, they're so much mightier than us, and they're, they're putting fear in all these businesses that are standing up for Jesus, and all these individuals who are standing up for the truth of God's word. If all of us Christians would stop cowering down and being quiet in our seats and sitting down and, and hiding, if we'd stand up in the middle of the temple and proclaim, if we'd stand up in the middle of Wake Cross, Georgia and proclaim some of these truths, call our representatives and all of those things, if we would stand up and do that, these people will back down. It's a truth, Brother Billy's preached it before, it's a truth all throughout the Word of God that Whenever the children of God rise up and they, they remove all fear of men and they start trusting God, the others will cower down and they'll fear God. We just need to stand up for Jesus. Verse, tw verse 26. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem. They've stood up for, for Jesus all throughout Jerusalem. They've filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. And verse 29, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. They stood up for Jesus again right there in the middle of the persecution. Uh, come down now. To verse 40. Come down to verse 40. He, he continued. I, I would like to keep reading. But you, you read this whole chapter. He continued to stand up for Jesus in a mighty way. He told them who Jesus was. Now come down to verse 40. 
And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So they'd been thrown into prison. They got out of prison and immediately and early in the morning stood up for Jesus. And they brought them back and warned them again and beat them and said, Don't you go preach in the name of Jesus. Don't stand up for Jesus anymore. And they let him go. And look at what they did. Verse 41. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Now the only way, I, I'm not ex I am thankful for these men, but I'm not exalting them in a, in a sense. The only way that these men were able to continue to, to go away from after being beaten, rejoicing, is the same reason that Stephen, while he was being stoned to death, was able to look up, and rejoice to see Jesus standing up for him at the right hand of the Father. It's the same thing here. Do you think Peter experienced something similar to what Stephen experienced? He sure did. Peter saw Jesus standing up for him and they, they left, those apostles left rejoicing because they knew Jesus was right there with them, standing up for them while they were standing up for Jesus. And they didn't quit. Daily they taught. <clears throat> Go with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 15. There's one verse here that I, I, I think all of us should mark down in our Bibles, circle it. If you don't want to write in your Bible, just mark it down somewhere. This verse is very important because there's an untruth being taught using a, using a verse of the Bible that says, and that's true, that God will not forsake us, Jesus will not forsake us or leave us. However, in an eternal sense, we are kept in God's hand. In an eternal sense, we will be in the eternal heaven when there's nothing can separate us from the love of God. He will not leave us. We are kept in His hand, eternally speaking. We are saved by grace, not of our works, and He keeps us. However, as we live in this world each day, if we forsake God, if we don't stand up for Jesus, then Jesus will forsake us while we live in this world. And we'll be in a hell on this earth that we will not be able to withstand. Uh, while you're turning, it was Second Chronicles chapter 15. But think about some things. We just this morning we just heard a sermon about how um, we are Jesus's friends if we keep His commandments. Jesus said, "You're my friends if you keep my commandments." And uh, that's if we're keeping His commandments, we're standing up for Him, and then He'll be our friend. He'll stand up for us. Um, draw nigh to God, and what? He will draw nigh unto you. That's the truth that this verse that we're about to read is, is proclaiming. That if you will stay close to Jesus and stand up for Jesus. Uh, think about Jesus in Matthew. He, he talked about, he preached, he was speaking that these men were, were fearing the people. Now, And he told them that if you fear the people, if you deny me in front of men... Then Jesus says, I will deny you before who? Again, that's not eternally speaking. But right here and now, you will not have fellowship with Jesus Christ and the Father if you deny Jesus Christ while we live. But, the good side of that, I want to keep on that side like Stephen. But, if we do proclaim Jesus, if we do stand up for Jesus, He will speak for us. He will be our mediator for God, and we will feel that fellowship. We'll rejoice in the middle of suffering somehow. We'll pray for our enemies. We will be full of righteousness, peace, and joy. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 2. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while ye be with him. Is that teaching the same truth I'm trying to share? That if if we stand up for Jesus, He will stand up for us. The Lord is with us while we are with Him. And if ye seek Him, He will be found of you. But if ye forsake Him, He will forsake you. This is the Word of God. This is not my words. This is the Word of God. If ye forsake Him, He will forsake you. So if you want Jesus to stand up for you like we've talked about in the miraculous way that he has for Stephen and for Peter and for all those other people in the Old Testament, David and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. If we desire that from God, 
Well, we have to do something. We have to do something kind of hard. But if you think about it, it should not be hard for us. We should not be so scared to stand up for Jesus because who should who would be better to have standing up for us? The men of this world who turn their back on Jesus, they they'll stand up for you now. If you if you don't stand up for Jesus, they'll stick up for you. They'll have your back. They form. Uh, there's millions of them in the United States that all group together to attack Christians and they'll stand up behind each other. But is it better to have them stand up for you or Jesus Christ standing up for you? Jesus, uh, Jesus could, could just blow on them and they would be gone forever. So uh, it's ridiculous for us not to stand up for Jesus and to cower down to those men and to fear those men. Turn with me to... Um, Psalm chapter 33. Psalm 33. Go forward to Psalm chapter 33. Uh, for time's sake, let me uh, go to 2 Kings. I'll talk to you about what was in Psalm 33 and 34. In Psalm 34, the Word of God says that the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. He looks upon the righteous, and His ears are open unto their cry. He hears the cry of the righteous. Who are the righteous? The ones that are standing up for who? Jesus. Jesus Christ. He hears them and he's standing up for them just like he did for Stephen. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. It's a serious thing for us not to stand up for Jesus. In 2 Kings, my last thought here is that we shouldn't just sit still. A lot of times, we're, we're not necessarily... See, the devil, if he can get us to go out and commit adultery, if he can get us to go out and murder somebody, if he can get us to go out and just speak negatively to people, if he can get us to sin in a commission way, if we can go out and commit sin, then the devil's got us. He's got us in a snare and he's won that battle. However, if he can get us to believe the Word of God, well... We don't really believe the Word of God if we don't stand up for Jesus. But if He can get us to say, Oh yeah, I agree that homosexuality is wrong. I agree that uh, marriage is between one man and one woman. I agree that homosexuality is an abomination with God. If He can get us to say that to ourselves inside, and we know that, but He can get us to sit still and not say anything to anybody else, He's also won the battle. If we just sit down and do nothing... The devil is still winning the battle. There's, there's a quote, I forget who it is, but Brooks can probably tell me. There's a quote from a founding father that talks about if we, if we see evil and we do nothing, then that is evil. Yeah. To, sit, to, to see it and say nothing, to be silent, that is evil. And that's a true statement. 2 Kings chapter 7, verses 3 and 4. 2 Kings chapter 7, verses 3 and 4. Now this is amazing. There were four lepers outside of this city. They were just sitting there, dying. They were sitting down, doing nothing, just waiting to die. Uh, and they, they changed their minds. Uh, they, they decided to stand up and do something. So, starting in verse 3, 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3. And there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? And that's my question to all of us. Why sit we here until the America is just... Gone. I mean, it may be gone, but we need to stand up for Jesus all the while. We need to occupy yeah. while we're here, and we need to stand up for Jesus anyway. Why sit we here until we die? Yeah. Um, verse 4, if we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city. They knew that there was nothing in the city. The famine was there, and they'd starved to death in the city too. And we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. So what did they decide to do? Now therefore come and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, listen to this statement here. So that they're deciding, we're not going to just sit here and die. We're not going to go into the city because we know that that's death. We're going to go to our enemies. We're going to go to the Syrians. It's doing, we're going to stand up and do something. And listen to this statement. If they save us, we'll live. But, and if they kill us... We shall but die. Um, I talked about this with my boys in the Bible study class. What, why should we fear any men? Uh, the Bible says that not to fear those that are able to destroy the body, to kill the body, but are not able to touch your soul. They can't kill your soul. 
But fear God, fear Jesus Christ, who is able to destroy your body and your soul in hell. And that hell is talking about fearing God. We have to fear God right now and not fear men in order not to experience a hell on earth where our body, our body can be covered and, and aches and afflictions. God can do that to us. But worse than that, God cannot let us see Him standing at the right hand of the Father. We cannot feel that joy and peace in the kingdom. And He can destroy our soul. Um, so, dying a physical death is, is, is but gain. Paul said that. To die is, is gain. We should not fear that. I, I pray that the Lord will help us to stand up for Jesus and that He'll remind us. The devil doesn't want us to remember this next phrase. We, we all know we should stand up for Jesus, but we fear the people and we, we, we think about how that will ruin our, our social lives. We think about some of those things. The devil wants us to forget this last part of my message tonight. Stand up for Jesus and Jesus will what? Stand up for you. Thank you.